Well, I was I was employed at another football club, a local football club, and um, the manager there was um, was sacked, and my position became a problem to that club, um, and they decided that uh, I should move on. Um, they ummed and ahed a little bit, and in the meantime, uh, the chance came about where the manager here asked me to come in and have a chat, uh, which I did. I thought I was coming in to sort of learn the ropes of how to. Um, to deal with being dismissed, and he offered me a job, and which was, uh, you know, you walk into this club thinking you're going to get some advice, and you walk out with a job is is very nice. I find that um, the manager is very good at um, seeing things. You know, he sees things, he likes things to develop, and you know, he, he possibly has followed what I did before. You know, I had three or four years coaching and he saw an opportunity maybe to, to bring somebody back in or to bring another coach in and I don't know whether it's fortune or what that my position at the other club was um, was failing then he, he thought yeah we'll get we'll get Mick in and uh, have a look at him. So you obviously went away and thought about it for a week or two didn't you? I gave him five <laughs> minutes yeah <laughs> I just uh, straight away it was a uh, decision made you know it was uh, it was ironic that I went home um, to my wife and just said, well, I've just been offered another job at Man United and it was sort of, say again, you know, what? Well, you know, he wants me to be a um, reserve team coach at Manchester United, which in itself was nice, you know, it wasn't sort of youth team or anything, it was like, get straight in there with the big boys. And um, it gave me a lot of confidence and a lot of satisfaction. It was, it was purely, a, again, it was a manager at West Brom who came to me and said that they'd been approached by Norwich City um, to see whether I fancied going there as a, as a player and to coach the reserves at Norwich. And at the time it was sort of not happening for me at West Brom. And uh, I decided, yeah, I would like to go and listen to what they have to say. And I went down there, I'd played there before, so I knew roughly what I was letting myself in for. And um, I took the opportunity. I'd, I'd done little bits, obviously, you know, you do little bits where you step into little soccer schools and stuff like that, but I'd never done anything on a professional scale. So it was a case of playing with youngsters in a reserve side and coaching them as well, you know, and, and I think in some ways it was more of, you know, an ex-player going back to a, a club who knew what it was all about and uh, it worked pretty well. Well, I'm, I'm sort of in the middle of everything. Um, the first team is the most important team at the club um, for results and, and to maintain, you know, all the um, all the good that's coming out from underneath. The youth team, they're bringing the players through and bringing them on. They get to my little area, and um, it's a it's a balancing act really. You get disappointment from players coming down from the first team squad, and you get the elation from the youngsters coming up and being on the fringe of, of everything. And it's a matter of balancing that up, working with young and mature players, getting them to try and gel and hopefully to further their careers, be it here or somewhere else. But it's mainly important to get these players up from the, the kids, grow them into men and get them in our first team. The frustrations are, are obvious really. You know, you get a, a mixture of players. You, you never have a settled sort of team you never, you know, you, there are certain things you can't work on because you don't know who's playing from one week to the next. You have a certain nucleus of players who will always be involved, maybe six or seven, but then a lot of it depends on who needs games, who's not fit, who's coming back, um, whose confidence is low, that needs to be brought in, who's on the up, can we squeeze them in? So it is, it's, it's variable all the time. Um, but the beauty of it is, is that they're at a stage, most of them in the career, where they want to keep learning they always want to be progressing. So you can throw things to them and they'll try it with no real detriment to, to failing because that's what it's all about. When they get into the next group, it's a little bit different. There are more um, questions to be asked. It's terrific. I mean, it's, it's lovely to see them come, you know, you see them come through the youth. So the youth team coaches enjoy them moving up into the next group. And it's no different for me. I love to work with them. But I also like to see now and again one or two maybe training with the first team for a start, getting into that sort of situation. And then you get games like 
you know, cup games where the manager says, right, who's doing well? Uh, can we have a look at him in the first team? And then you get three or four of them suddenly going and breaking into Manchester United's first team, playing against good opposition in good crowds, and we find out loads about them then. It's not just me. I mean, I am part of the link to the to the to the whole thing. You know, there's there are the coach, or all the coaches are working for one aim, and that is to make footballers for this club. And so far, so good. It is working, and there are players who are coming through. There's more talent now. You know, the, the talent or the cream has to be there now. You know, and the ones that can achieve that will always have a place here. But that is what we're all striving for. You know, it's not just an average player's game here anymore. You know, it is about quality, exceptional players, players who are going to improve what is already here. So you have to be something special to improve what is here because you know success is taking its toll and ensure that quality is demanded here. Well, footballers are never patient. It never happens. You know, they always want it today. They don't want it tomorrow. Um, but that's good. That drives them on. That drives them forward. It's sometimes difficult to, to just pull them back a little bit and say, you know, you're just not quite ready for it yet. We don't feel as though you, you're ready to take it on. Uh, you need a little bit more. And, and that is sometimes hard for them to understand because they all want it like tomorrow. They all want to play in the next first team game. But there are ways of getting there and then when they get there, the hardest part is staying there. The manager covers everything. <laughs> he, uh, he has his finger on the pulse on everything. Um, sometimes he watches the games, sometimes he doesn't. You know, he has, he has many other things to consider at the moment. But yeah, he's, he's very supportive to all the staff, not just myself. And he, uh, he obviously wants to see the progression of play, which you know, he's set up right from day one. I was very, very pleased to be invited to be part of this, uh, both as a player and as a coach. I mean, to have two bites of the cherry is, is brilliant when some don't even get one. So I'm, uh, I'm more than happy doing what I'm doing and hopefully the players benefit from it and I, and I benefit from it.